Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 474. Are pharmacies and insurance companies practicing medicine without a license? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moppin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. You probably know that it's illegal to practice medicine without a license. In order to practice medicine in any of the definitions of what constitutes medicine, you have to get an education, you have to pass a test, and you have to be certified by a state uh, agency that licenses you for the practice of whatever you do. I have a, a license from the state of Missouri to be a school teacher. I have a license from the state of Missouri to be uh, a, a counselor. Dr. Maupin has a license to be a physician. Mm-hmm. We had to go through all those steps to get to that. My insurance agent does not have a license to practice medicine uh, or counseling. Uh, my pharmacy has a license to be a pharmacist, but doesn't have one to practice medicine. So which they, means, they walk between the specific. lines on things that they can do. They cannot prescribe medicine. Your insurance company can't prescribe medicine. Right. And your pharmacist can't prescribe medicine. That is not on their list. And, they, and, and that is a big Pharmacists difference. have knowledge and make recommendations. Sure. But the recommendation typically is you need to discuss this with your doctor. Mm-hmm. And this is the thing that I think, you, if it's a prescription, mm-hmm. if it's an over-the-counter kind of thing, yeah, that's a little then different. They, can, they can deal with that. But Insurance when, companies we're talking don't about do either one. Yeah, we're talking about prescriptions. So, so the reason that we had this conversation, I am 72 years old. And look darn good. <laughs> my wife and I were on vacation in another state, and I get a phone call, my cell phone, from my pharmacy, Walgreens. It's a national pharmacy. I use them because we travel a lot, and if I'm somewhere and I need to do something medically, then I want access to the prescription there. Mm-hmm. So I get a phone call from Walgreens and it says, well, we're working with your uh, insurance company. You're on Medicare, but you have a, a supplement and with your supplement insurance company. And we noticed that you're taking two prescriptions. And they told me what they were. And they said, I said, yeah, that's all true. You're Walgreens. It says Walgreens on my phone here. Uh, you have my information. It's in your files. My insurance company has the information. It's in their files. You guys talk to each other. There is, there, there is no such thing as, as having security with your information between these two groups. Absolutely insurance. not. You sign when you, when you to have insurance, buy the you stuff. You have to sign it away. It, it's kind of like when you download something in, uh, from Apple. And it says you have to check this box that you've read all the legal terms. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever reads them. But somewhere in the legal terms that I signed when I went to Walgreens or to my insurance company, said, well, they can track all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So so I've had, uh, being old, had several of these episodes with Walgreens. So I get this phone call from Walgreens. And they said, well, we noticed that you're taking these two medicines. But you're not taking this third medicine. I said, no, I'm not. My doctor doesn't think I need it. And that's fine. Well, but statistically, most of the people that are taking these two medicines are taking this third medicine. And so we're calling to let you know that you should probably be on it. And I said, I don't have that health issue. And it's that's not a concern. where they crossed the line. And <laughs> my doctor doesn't think that I need to be on this medicine. Well, but within five years, statistically, blah, blah, blah. I said, look. We're not having more of this conversation. I, I don't want to take another medicine. And I, what, what would have to happen, because they can't prescribe, is they would stir me up to cause me to go and see my physician, make an appointment, go in and say, hey, should I be on this medicine? And then my physician would have to consider it. So, so that's all theoretically good. It's it, just a, a, you know, they're just concerned about my health. It's not good. <laughs> well, First that's of the all, argument that they're going to make. I have a with somebody calling me and knowing my medical history right. and questioning me about it. I don't want to have that conversation with anyone. That you haven't chosen to go to. That just I've, a random I call. I don't know them. I don't yeah. know who they are. I don't know yeah. if they if they go out and talk about my medical history to whoever. I mean, they, I don't know if they've signed a confidentiality agreement like my patients have 
ha, my, my staff has in my office. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if they've done that. I don't know if they know somebody I know. They're going to tell my medical history to them. Well, and what I can guarantee I you is that the young lady on the phone talking to me was not a pharmacist. Right. She was an employee of the pharmacy. Mm-hmm. She and, and and or of the health mm-hmm. insurance agency. And somehow, but, and I don't she know was, what kind of education she had or what she knows, and you know, but she knew my file was in front of her that said I take two medicines. And that's your confidential and that information. Typically, the people that take those two medicines also take a third one. And I and I actually know all the research behind that, and that and and that is only necessary when someone actually has things you don't have. Right. Exactly. And so they they aren't doctors. They haven't read the research. They don't know if this is not right for you. They haven't even seen you. They don't. Yeah. They don't know that you're normal weight. They don't know that you exercise. They don't know any of the yeah. stuff that your doctor does. Right. So, so so I think this is an invasion of privacy. But I also think it is it is illegal practice of medicine because what if he was ninety years old? What if he couldn't hear very well? What if what? she got him wild riled up and. And and yeah. and then they go yelling at their doctor and saying, you know, I was told I need this. You know, I mean, yeah. what a horrible anxiety provoking <laughs> situation for someone who doesn't know that they're not talking to a medical practitioner. And if, and so this is where we got into the conversation because I know a lot of old people being old, and <laughs> I talk to them. They talk to me, and a number of them get I'm these phone admit calls. That. Yeah, never going to admit you're old. Uh, but you're not old as I am. But people get scared. People, older people, get these phone calls. They come up and say Walgreens on their phone, and they go to Walgreens, and they're like, "Well, is there a problem? Is there something I should take this call?" Because mm-hmm. it, it's not unknown. Mm-hmm. It, it says Walgreens, and they talk to these people, and they say, "Well, we're from Walgreens, and we're worried about your health." For instance, three or four years ago, uh, <laughs> we had a similar situation occur. Doctor Maupin, who is my physician and prescribes for me put me on a thyroid medicine and because I had a thyroid issue. So I was on this thyroid medicine. She got a letter from my insurance company that doesn't pay for this because it's not in their formulary. They don't include it in their... They're not involved in this at all. Not, yeah, not whatever. But, but they because know. they have my records from Walgreens, they know I go to Walgreens and get the thyroid medicine. So they send my physician of record a letter saying, are you aware <laughs> that you are pr- uh, practicing non-standard of care, that this medicine that you're prescribing for this gentleman is not the standard of care for elderly gentlemen. And so Dr. Maupin gets this letter out of the blue, and she's like, what is this all about? So she calls me, and she said, I have this letter. What do you want me to do? And I said, it's none of their business. Write them and tell them it's none of their business and not to bother you with this again. So she did that. Then I wrote him a letter and said, why are you even having this conversation? You, you don't have my permission to speak to this lady about my health care, about this medicine, because you don't pay for it. I don't ask you to pay for it. It's none of your business. And, you know, their argument is, well, it's our business because we're worried about your health and you're so, one of our patients. So the, and, yeah, to back that up, yeah. there's a lot of things that are not good for elderly people because it might keep them alive longer. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Oh, so now the deep state is going to get involved. They now, want me to die. If you go off your thyroid medicine when just because you're 71 or 70, then you are going to have many illnesses that follow. Right, that I would And not only otherwise. is your life expectancy going to be limited, but you're going to be miserable throughout the whole rest of your life. Right. So your cholesterol goes up. I mean, I can't even tell you how many things happen when you don't take your thyroid. Right. This, yesterday in JAMA, there, an article came out that said nobody over 80 should take thyroid so, medicine. So JAMA is a journal of the American Medical Association. They put out a, a monthly publication I to, mean, to doctors, in, and they give them guidelines about this is what our thinking is for how this, we move and go And this forward. was a study, but what they did was they they asked people if they were tired and they're old. Uh-huh. You know? it uh, or isn't, cold. Or cold. Yeah. But those are the only two things they asked them about. They didn't ask them about... You know whether their bowels moved. They didn't ask them if they were swollen. They didn't. But but the catch was, in this study, one of the ways you can make a study fail or say something doesn't work is to make the dose too low. So the dose was so low that it didn't do anything. And so they, they show it's not working. So they just they just set this whole thing up to make it look like 
You shouldn't give medicine to older people, give thyroid medicine to older people, which, I mean, the only thing I can think of is why would you do that? Only if you wanted older people to just go away. Or have more illnesses for which you could make more money. Well, that may be it. Or just save money on Synthroid or save money on, that's what they're normally on, or Armour Thyroid. Yeah. I mean, that could be, that's how they got, they made women afraid of hormones so that they saved a lot of money from Medicare because women were too afraid to take it. And their doctors were afraid for them to take it. They said, right. this is going to kill and them. Then they, and then they pulled the study back. Yeah. Ten years later. And ten years later, they say, oh, that study wasn't right. Yeah. And, and so but, we no longer recommend this. But nobody's gone back and said, and, and, and a lot of people haven't really heard the, the, the recall on that, on that, on the WHI study. So. Yeah. So uh, the point of our conversation, uh, it gets lost in all the details, but I am concerned as the population ages and as we lose some of our faculties, we become more easily frightened, we become more easily manipulated. And, and I personally am an advocate for restricting, for instance, the, the ability of drug companies to market a drug on television and radio because you watch those ads and they, they in a 60-second film, they show you this beautiful setting full of happy people who are sleeping all night or, or picnicking with their grandchildren or <laughs> coming home from the cancer hospital, and, and they say, buy this drug. Well, you can't ask buy your, the drug. They say, ask your doctor. Ask your, about this what drug. they say is, ask your physician if this would be right for you. So you get all these people calling the doctors, trying to get in and see them, and saying, "I, I want to look like the people in that ad. Can can you make that happen? Will you give me this prescription?" So they're trying to sell drugs and make money. They may be also trying to make people aware mm -hmm. that there are medicines for these mm -hmm. illnesses that help people. But I just think my own bias. I'm not qualified to make those decisions. If I start to have symptoms, I'll go to a doctor. The doctor can run tests and tell me, try this medicine. I don't want those ads stirring me up to, to make me believe that it's possible that all God's children are going to heaven if they just take this named drug that nobody knows what it is. And in general, those are really expensive drugs if they spend enough money on doing national commercials. And they always list at the end of it in a low sub rose of voice, a low sub rose of voice. Well, this medicine could kill you. It could cause heart attacks. It can make you bleed. You can fall over and die. You shouldn't drive a car. Don't shoot a gun. Don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it does. It does. I mean, they all say that. They all say that, but nobody hears but that. But the part. butterflies are flying around, and the music is nice, and the girls That's are sexy. That's just advertising. And my point is, I don't think you should. I don't be think to it do should it. be advertised like that, or I don't think it should be advertised. Hon honestly, doctors learn about drugs. They get flyers when new drugs come out. Yeah. We get. Well, Apocrates it's people that go tells around and make a living marketing right, new drugs to you. Right, but but they don't go through us much anymore. Yeah. They're just going through the patients because they can manipulate them more. Patients don't know everything that we know. And so they, <laughs> they don't can know anything. talk to I don't them. know anything. But but the fact is is that the person that knows you is the doctor that you go to or one of the doctors you go to or all of them. And they're the ones that know your history, know everything, at least know by looking. It's all in front of them on their computer. Yeah. And they can determine whether you need something or not. If you don't have the problem, you don't need the drug. So, I mean, that is, it just is, it is very so, misleading. So really what we're trying to say is go to the person, your nurse practitioner or your doctor, who has a license to practice medicine, who knows how the medicines work, and who knows how what you have. And a lot of this other stuff that is going on is, yes, it's a violation of your privacy, right. but you've signed it away just to have insurance because they make you do that. Right. Or just to go to a pharmacy. I don't know if I've signed that away at the pharmacy, though. I'll bet maybe, you somewhere. Maybe somewhere, somewhere at the yeah. bottom of where you, where you signed to get your prescription. Well, because you signed for them to check with the insurance company to see if they'll pay for it. True. So they have those so, records. Yeah. So in any case, this is something that we just think you should know about. You shouldn't be worried when you get phone calls like that. You should just write it down and take it up with your doctor next time you go up and say, they called yeah, me. Yeah. What, what's this I about? Was, I was having this, this exact conversation with a friend of mine. I have a friend who's getting cancer treatments, and I had to take him to mm -hmm. the hospital to get the treatment. And we were having this conversation. And he's in his late 70s. And he said, well, we solve that problem at home because we don't answer the phone if we don't know who's calling. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that'll, that'll solve some of those problems. But in this case, I knew who was calling. And we sat on my phone, and it was mm -hmm. somebody I had a relationship with. Mm -hmm. So 
I, I answer the phone. They could do that to you. Mm-hmm. And my concern is if you are elderly, you need to think about how to protect yourself from this kind of manipulation. And if you are responsible for someone that is elderly, if you have an aging father or mother or uncle, be aware that they're going to be inundated with these manip- manipulative messaging opportunities. And they may reach out to you and be concerned. What should I do? Am I supposed to do this? Do I need to call these people back? Mm-hmm. These people want to check. Uh, try to be aware. Try to be involved. Help protect them from the frailty of aging in today's America. So thank you for listening. And you can always ask the caller if they're a doctor or not. And if they're not, then you can just... Now, are you my doctor? You know, yeah. Why the hell are you calling me? Yeah. <laughs> so, so just remember and be aware. And we just want you to know that this is happening. Even if it's not you, it's happening to it. Maybe your parents. Absolutely. So take care of them. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.